why we are using partial fraction this is the important part so this is known as uh, algebraic fractions right in grade 11 what we have done we have take a common denominator and we simplified that result So now it will be 6x minus 7 over x minus 1, x minus 2. So this is the simplified answer of this fraction. So this is known as simplification. Most of the time we had this kind of result to simplify. Accordingly that way we call this is partial fraction. So all the time we will have this kind of result and we are going to find the main part main fraction so this is known as partial fraction in partial fraction we have five theorems we have five theorems to understand one by one I will discuss what are those the first theorem theorem number one So, we will have this kind of result, Qx over Qx, and Qx cannot be 0, and the denominator should be factorized as linear, should be factorized as linear. So this is the best example for this guy, the theorem, x minus a, x minus b. So you can see the denominator, we will have a linear factors. So normally, just writing x minus a, x minus b. So this is the behavior of the theorem, right? And all the time we have the denominator, like the linear parts x minus a x minus b or x minus c or something like that and we are dividing it to a over x minus a b over x minus b to the individual part if it is three terms here x minus a x minus b x minus c you should have added plus c over x minus c so this is the first theorem now i'm going to discuss the example Example number one. 2x minus 1 over x minus 1, x minus 2, x minus 3. So according to theory, you can write it like a over x minus 1, b over x minus 2, c over x minus 3. Now I'm going to take a common denominator of the right hand side. X minus 1, x minus 2, x minus 3. A should be multiplied by x minus 2, x minus 3. And also B, x minus 1, x minus 3. X minus 1, x minus 2. 2x minus 1. can see the numerators are cancelled. 2x minus 1 equal to a times x minus 2, x minus 3, b times x minus 1, x minus 3. And also c, x minus 1, x minus 2. Now, what we have to do, we have to find these a, b, c constants. These are unknown constants. And here, Comparing these two sides, you can see when you put x equal 1, 
to the complete equation so you will have the result like 1 equal in 2 into 1 minus 1 equal here a times 1 minus 2 1 minus 3 here 1 minus 1 is 0 1 minus 1 also 0 0 plus 0 therefore a will be 2 minus 1 over minus 1 into minus 2 plus half so likewise likewise I'm going to put plus 2 and it will be 3 equal it's going 0 it's going to be 0 but here it's b 2 minus 1 2 minus 3 3 equal minus b then b will be minus 3 this is my a this is my b the next one I'm going to put plus 3 so when you put plus 3 it will be 6 minus 1 it's 5 equal 0 and also 0 and c only c will be appear 3 minus 1 is 2 it's 1 5 equal 2c c equal 5 by 2 so these are the coefficients unknown constants that we have so after that you have to f finish that sum like representing like the equation into x minus 1, x minus 2, x minus 3, 2 x minus 1, half into x minus 1, minus x minus 2. 5 by 2 is minus 3. So this is the final answer of the partial fraction.